Hello everybody, you are listening to Celebrating White History. Um Alfred. The topic of today's broadcast is the only possible outcomes of a generation of anti white white people. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Galatians chapter six verse seven. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Bible I read. Be not deceived, God is not smoked, but whatsoever a man sweats, that shall he also reap. You see, it's telling you be not deceived. There are a lot of people who think that the law of sowing and reaping doesn't work. You know, this is basically where um, some religions get the idea of karma. You know, that is basically this, um, what it's saying here. You know, what you sow is what you reap. There are people who say that, you know, it is not um, so that sometimes, you know, crime pays, you know, sometimes bad people end up well or good things, you know, don't always happen to good people. Sometimes bad things happen to good people. You see, it is not um, true in, re in, in, in the complete outlook of things. It is your definition of good people that is wrong. When you say bad things happen to good people, the problem with that is your definition of good people. For example, let's say somebody lives a holy life, a righteous life, you see, and in spite of that, later armed robbers come to the person's house and kills him and, you know, maybe rapes his wife and takes away their money. You may look at it and say that that is um, an example of bad things happening to good people but you see the problem with that is your definition of good it is not enough to live a holy and righteous life in your eyes what about security why wasn't he living in a place that had enough security to withstand the robbers you see that is included why didn't he have you know the training and the ability to actually fight against opposition why didn't he make the right choices to make enough money to live in a more secure neighborhood or in a gated community or you know with better security because the bible makes it clear the bible tells you that a rich man's wealth is a strong city that means that if if you do not have wealth you are living in vulnerability your lack of wealth your poverty it has created a vulnerability for you because you do not lack you you lack that strong city around you that wealth creates. So you see, in your eyes, that is an example of a of a of a bad thing of bad things happening to a good person, you know. But that is not the truth. That person disobeyed the scripture. You see, that person disobeyed the scripture. By not taking advantage of the fact that you have to be rich and your wealth is going to build protection around you it is not enough to obey one scripture perhaps you don't um you don't fornicate you don't do this you, you don't break any of the ten commandments but outside of the ten commandments there are a lot of other commandments and there are personal instructions that god can give you god can tell you I want you to start praying for one hour every day between the Holy Spirit and you. If you disobey that, it is not among the Ten Commandments. Other people will look at you as you are doing a, 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 a you are good and all of that. But in God's sight, how can you be good when you are disobeying God? God has told you that I want you to pray for one hour every day. You know, let's say that God wants you to to live in God says go to this place and be a missionary or go and live in this place or go and work there did you obey god so you have to understand that aspect of things you know so when it comes to people saying bad things happen to good people you know that is a very limited sight you are not seeing the full picture whatever a man sows that shall he reap if you are good good things will happen to you being good means that you have to obey all the all the instructions you have to have a relationship with God even if for example you've had sermons about faith you've you've had testimonies about faith even if um, you are in a position where a car accident happened as somebody who have had testimonies uh, of by other Christians who they were in a car where perhaps the car tumbled three times four times they screamed Jesus they shouted Jesus or they prayed and they came out without a scratch on their body when that bad thing is happening 
to you in, in the sight of the world. Let's say that you have an accident and it's tumbling. Why, after, especially as somebody who has heard that, even if you have not heard that, you should have faith and know that you are protected, that you are in Christ, that you belong to Christ. And you use the power of Jesus to survive that and come out. And then that thing is not a bad thing happening to you. It is a testimony. That is what it is. So you see, bad things do not happen to good people. The people who think that bad things happen to good people don't see it. That is why the Bible is saying, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sweat, he shall reap. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. If you are a bad person, bad things will happen to you. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. If you're a good person, good things will happen to you. There are people who do not understand it. So, they are deceived. They are deceived because they lack what I just explained to you. They lack the understanding of what I just explained to you. So, they are deceived. And they think that God is mocked. They think that this scripture does not always apply. That sometimes bad things happen to good people. No, bad things do not happen to good people. But opportunities for testimonies are given to good people. You know, a storm that would have come to destroy, you know, which somebody may look at as a bad thing that about to happen to a good, a, a good person. If you are good in the sense of you also have faith, it is written without faith is impossible to please God. So you have your goodness has only pleased man. Let us say that you have the faith also. Your faith, without faith, you will walk on water like Peter. You will walk through the storm. You will overcome the storm through the power of Jesus. And that so-called thing that would have been a story of a bad thing happening to a good person, or some people in the world may still look at it that way, it is now a testimony. It is now an account of how you walked on water, how you walked through the storm, or walked through the difficulties and the problems of life. You know that came. So that that is something when you when you walk in faith, you understand that as a matter of fact, it should be natural for you to live a life of the supernatural. When the sticks and stones, when the storms comes, you should walk over them and sail. That is part of being good. In the sight of God, to men you are good because you are doing good things in their eyes. But to God, God has told you it is impossible to please without faith, it is impossible to please God. So how can you with your faithlessness? Be good in the sight of God. There is no good person in the sight of God that doesn't have faith, that doesn't work in faith. When trouble comes, you do not stand on the word of God. You do not believe that by the power of God in you, you can overcome. You cower. You are afraid. You are subject to fear. You, are, you see, so you, you may be good in the eyes of the world, but not God. So they understand this. Now, we are living in a day and time where there are a lot of white people who basically are anti-white. Thanks to the critical race theory, the BLM, and all the nonsense that they are being taught. You know, now what is the outcome of, of such a thing? What do you think will result from it? You know, in either way, it is not good. There is the aspect of self-preservation. When the persecution of white people or people of European descent gets to a certain point, self-preservation will kick in. You know, because right now, there are a lot of jobs that are taken away from white people and people of European descent. There are people who are boldly saying, I do not hire um, white people or I want to only hire gay people or, you know, they have to meet quotas and all of that. Even schools like Harvard and Yale are doing the quota nonsense, you know, that oh, we need this percentage of, we need, we need an increase of, of, of just females. We want to hire people because they are females. We want to hire this percentage of um, African-Americans, you know, we, we have enough white people, you know, all these kinds of things. It reach a point that the people who are supporting it now, the Antifa and the children of the Antifa, you see, they are now going to flip and do a 180 when it comes to time for preservation. And they will be full out racists towards non-white people because now you are forcing everybody to form their own clique based on their skin color if you are african-american you have to think this way and that is why they hate candace owen so much it's like you have to think this way and a lot of people are observing it that is why even you can see biden saying if you if, if you don't vote for me you are not black because that rhetoric of what it means to be 
an African American, I won't even go into the problem with um, using that word black. You know, I've said it many times before that black represents darkness, it represents evil, it re represents unwanted, and it was actually a racial slur. And that is why it was used. And that is what actually the original dictionary meaning of black is. That is what it, it, it is. It, it actually means. It was later on they started adding people of African descent into that definition, which is wrong. They should not be included at all because it was originally created as a slur. It's kind of like including African Americans into the N word in the dictionary or in the urban dictionary and saying that after all, African Americans easy to refer to themselves and all of that. No, let it mean what it means. We know that it is a racial slur. It is a racial slur. You know, so the N word is a racial slur. Calling African Americans or people of African descent black is also a racial slur. You know, it's something that I have stopped using ever since I, uh, I learned this. You know, I, I have stopped calling anyone black. You may notice that once in a while I use, you know, the word white. Because the reason is that when you also look in the dictionary, white means a lot of beautiful things. It represents holiness. It represents purity. It represents clean. It represents wanted. It represents what is desired. It represents, you know, something that is divine and shining. That is what white represents. So it is positive, unlike black. You know, so that is why I, I sometimes still use the word white, but I, I don't use black to refer to any race of people. You know, so that being said, you can see why Biden said what he said about um, voting. You know, uh, if you don't vote for me, you are not um, black. Because he has looked, created, he, has, he sees it. And he notices that this is what it com comprises. You know, everyone uh, they, is now forming into groups. This is what an African American has to be. This is what all people of African descent. This is that the opinions they have to have. And it, it's pushing all non-whites into their own category, pushing um, Asians into their own category. Keep in mind that these people were united, and there was a lot of intermarriage and a lot of mingling. You know, sometimes you don't know where some people start and where they end. You know, when it comes to race, you know, especially a lot of mixed people, it's like you look at somebody, you don't know, am I looking at an Asian, am I looking at an African, am I looking at an African-American Asian or a, or a Hispanic, are they Spanish, are they from, you know, you, you can't figure out where some people are. But what this type of thing is doing is further creating divides and the need for cliques to build. So when you create a clique that has to be based on race and it separates itself from other people based on race. What do you think is going to result? So, in the future, we are going to have a kickback, which we are not seeing, from white people towards non-white people. And the focus will be on those of African descent and Africans. And it's not going to be pretty. Because Africans and people of Africans are not going to sit back and fold their hands. And what they are doing is going to make matters. Every, it is going to so escalate. And it may create a, a situation where some nations may even have to divide. You know, so that is one outcome. You know, and that is not a good outcome of all this um, hatred of white people towards um, themselves. There is another outcome which is um, obviously already happening. And that is... When you have a generation of a people who are responsible for a lot of all the good in this world, who invented the aeroplane? A white man. Who invented, who, who, who discovered gravity? White man. Who discovered, you know, electricity? White man. Who gave us internet? White man. Who gave us ceiling fans, electric fans, refrigerators? Who gave us solar energy? Who gave us every single thing white men when you now attack that and say that it is evil you are destroying a very key aspect of humanity that has made you humanity great as a whole it is going to become a disaster because when you are attacking men it's just like feminists feminists are a bunch of crazy people you know, they don't think. They don't think. It is men that fought wars and battles on your behalf so that you will be alive today. 
for many generations, all women had to do was to be beautiful. They didn't do anything. You know, in the cases where the woman was poor, then perhaps she worked in the kitchen. But the reality of the matter is that a woman working in the kitchen was looked as as her husband was not wealthy or her husband was not well-to-do. Because if her husband was well-to-do, understand history, you know, and don't read all these modern books. Go to the books that were there. Go to old books and read them and see how people live their life. People had relatives. It is not now when you see um, they have child abuse laws. A child of seven years old in America and in other parts of the world has already started working in the fields and at home. So what work is the woman doing? The woman was overseen, in the, even in the case of a poor woman. Now, in the case of a, a situation where the man had some means, he either bought a slave if he was poor, because buying slaves was actually something that was looked upon as what poor white men did. The wealthy white men did not want anybody who was African in the vicinity of their land. As a matter of fact, in the kinds of neighborhoods, like for example, in, in a lot of um, prestigious neighborhoods, poor white people were not allowed to go there. How many poor white people do you think neared courts? Understand the mentality, because it was a class-based society. How many people do you think that were poor and white near Buckingham Palace? For you to work as a cleaner in Buckingham Palace made you higher in rank and in a class-based society, better more than a shop owner that is not even allowed, you know, anywhere near Buckingham Palace. So it was a class-based mentality. A squire who was actually basically a houseboy or a a butler or a, or a male maid to a knight was of a higher rank to somebody who was a successful merchant. That was how they looked at things. So there, was, there were no people of African descent among the rich of the whites. They, they were not even allowed. It was, it was, they, they, did, they, did, they did not even tolerate it. That is something that you know. So what was the white woman dream? She just sat back, had mates. And when you look at African societies, African societies had slavery. So what was the woman doing in African societies? You know, a, a lot of African societies, that is the reality of the matter. There are a lot of men that had like, when a man has like um, 20, 30, 50 wives, what work is each of the women doing when it comes to labor? Because think about all the children that they that they, that are there. All those children are working for the family, so they are technically working for him. It's like an unregistered company where the father is the CEO. That is what it is, and all the children from childhood they are working. So what work? And the female children, the mothers are teaching the female children. So the, the mothers are actually only working when they feel like it, and that is just doing little housework. And what housework was there to do, especially in African societies? So. These are things that are not even talked about or looked upon, but women want to have that idea of they have been oppressed since the beginning of time. That is madness, you know, and it is that same um, lack of knowledge and the changing of history that have made a lot of white people hate and condemn their ancestry. You know, this continuous hatred by white people towards other white people and this destruction of the people that are responsible for all the great things we have around us. Who invented the piano? Who was the one who invented our ability to record music? Who was the one who invented a microphone? Many of you are watching this on the internet. Who invented the internet? It's not a white man. But when you keep on attacking white people, white men, where, where will greatness come from? Yeah, destroys a, a key aspect. Something that people should be proud about. You are destroying a very important key aspect of humanity. So, what does the future of the world see? We have a situation where there will not be limited creativity, limited greatness. And, you know, when you have a low self-esteem of yourself, because that is what is going to create, you know, a, a, a world where white people will have low self-esteem, because of course, how can you have a high self-esteem when you have, when you believe that where you come from is evil, where 
when you believe that all your ancestors are evil and you condemn everything white, think about it this way. If you're an African-American, you know, I am made to believe that everything African-American, everything from your culture is evil and wrong. What, how would you feel about yourself? You will feel worthless. So think about an entire generation of the greatest group of people who is responsible for a lot of the great advances that this world has ever seen. All of them not being able to produce, all of them being destroyed psychologically. All of them being cast into a position where they look down on themselves, where they do not believe in themselves. What kind of future and world is that? That is one of the outcomes. Remember, whatever a man swear, that shall he also read. This is something that everybody would suffer. And it also creates an opportunity for somebody to now step in and take over that space. And who is going to take it over? Is it going to be the Antichrist or somebody who is a precursor to the Antichrist or, you know, somebody who is just dem demonic? Or will that position ever be filled in the close future or will it, or will it you know, remain vacant for quite a long time? You know, so there are, there are so many layers of problems that can result from that, you know. In, in addition to that, there are so many different outcomes from this, but I've just focused on like two, you know. And each of these outcomes are bad. We must do everything we can to stop critical race theory, to stop uh, the foolishness and the racism of Black Lives Matter and... You know, all these African-Americans who are super racist and, you know, to them, they feel good when um, they put down a white person or they put down something from white culture or insult white people or, or, or you know, are racist, you know. So um, that is something that um, we'll have to fight against. To find out more about what I'll be doing and what I would like you to be a part of doing, you know on fighting against this and how we'll go against it because we need to do something more strategic you know just reach out to me on alfred.vip i'm looking forward to hearing from you my contact details is there now if you are listening to this and you've not given your life to christ i would like you to click on the salvation prayer link in the main menu of alfred of vip page of commander has a prayer of salvation say that prayer and give your life to jesus christ that is it for today. Thank you and God bless you.